What's up guys, welcome back to Gabriela Gap Prod. Today we are going to see how to create a nice shader and there are several types of ice, it's not done in the same way across games as you can see, but they all share two things in common, which is the color, light blue and white, and refraction, which is the way it influences light. So with that in mind, I jumped into Unity and created this ice shader. And I think the end result is pretty neat, since it only takes a few minutes to achieve a decent ice material. This is all available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested, I left the link in the description. Alright, so let's see how we can create this one. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome online community with an enormous amount of classes that goes from game development, illustration, animation and so much more. Once you are a member, you get access to thousands of classes, which means you can explore any classes you want about any topic. Personally, what I love is the variety of topics. For example, in this class, Unity Basics, taught by David McDonnell, I can create a monetized game for Android and iOS in 4 hours. Plus, you can ask questions directly to the teacher in case you have any doubts. And you can join Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. The first 1000 users will get a 2 month of premium membership for free, so you can explore your creativity at your own pace. Alright, so I'm using URP in 2019.4 and before we start, don't forget to go to Package Manager and install Shader Graph. Once that is done, we want to create a new PBR graph and PBR because we need metallic smoothness and normal properties so the eyes can interact with the light properly. So let's open it up with double click, I'm gonna dock it here and I'm also going to create a sphere and then create a material out of this shader already and assign it to the sphere. And I could be using main preview but we won't see the sphere interact with the scene. Next we need a few vector1 properties. The first one is going to be for the metallic property. Then we need another one for the smoothness and one for the normals. All of them are going to be sliders and the normals can have a minimum and a maximum of minus 3 and 3. Smoothness is going to have a default value of 0 0.5. So let's drag it and connect it right here. The normals we will use it in a moment. Right, so now we need a color property for the ice color. We can use it in the HDR mode. And then a texture 2D property for the ice texture. And you can find this texture in a link that I left in the description, by the way. And once we have those properties, what we really need now is the scene color node. If we connect this to the albedo and save it, you may get a few artifacts. And that's happening mostly because you need to make sure that you go to your project settings, in graphics, select your universal render pipeline asset and then turn on Dev Texture and Opaque Texture. And the scene color represents what the camera is seeing by feeding an input UV, which is expected to be the screen position. So once we do that, it should work fine, but it doesn't. Only because the surface of this shader is set to opaque instead of transparent. Once we set it to transparent, we have a nice looking glass. Once we have glass, we can distort it so it starts looking like ice. The way we distort it is by using this ice texture. Let's sample it. And if we multiply this with the screen position and feed it to the scene color, nothing much happens because in the material of our sphere we need to assign the texture again. And now as you can see we have an absurd amount of distortion. The way we control that distortion, also known as Indice of Refraction, is by using a LERP node. The B option is going to be for the UVs completely distorted and the A option is going to be for the UVs without distortion. The T option is going to be a vector one called Refraction Amount with a slider between minus 1 and 1. I'm gonna push it up here 
and connect it to the T option. Now in the inspector, once we start playing with this refraction amount, we get a nice distortion. But it's not quite properly distorted. We need to, after we multiply it, we need to add it once again to the screen position without distortion, like this, and then replace the connection to the B option. Let's save this and now it looks a little bit better. Alright, so we have a nice looking distortion sphere. Remember, what we also need is to distort the light. So we need to generate normals from a texture. From this texture right here. And we can connect the normals vector 1 to the strength, which is 0 for now, and then connect this to the normals input of the PBR master. And now in the inspector, once we start increasing the normals value, we start seeing some distortion of the light. We can also play with the smoothness and with metallic property. The metallic property is going to be low, but the smoothness can go to around 0 0.8. I think it looks nice. Something more or less like this. Alright, looking good. Now, on top of what we have, let's also add our ice texture. Alright, that looks a little bit better. We are just missing the color of the ice. So, let's add that. We already have the property here. We just need to multiply it like this. And now in the inspector, we are able to select a color. If you want, you can also play with the intensity. More or less like this should be fine. Once again, this is up to your taste, of course. If you look back to the reference, you will notice that we have this white most of the times around of our eyes. And the easiest way to add that is with a Fresnel effect, which we can already go ahead and create a vector one for the Fresnel power with a default value of 1 and connect it right here. What we can also do is add a color property for the Fresnel color. Change it to HDR mode and multiply it with the Fresnel effect. With that being done, we can add this to our main pipeline and replace the connection to the albedo. And once we save this, we have this nice white all around. And we can adjust the radius of the Fresnel, the power of the Fresnel, and play with the color of the Fresnel and with the eyes. One of the last things we need is a way to control the scale of the eyes texture. And that is easily done with a tiling and offset node. connected to the UV of the ice texture. And then we need a vector to call it the ice styling with a default value of one in the X and in the Y and connect it right here to the tiling. This will allow you to control the scale of the ice texture, which is nice, can be useful. All right, so instead of using a sphere, let's imagine that we are using some crystals and I got these crystals from the asset store, by the way, from here. So let's drag and drop our ice material, just like this. And unfortunately, we get some strange artifacts. And since it is transparent, this happens. Fortunately, we can easily fix this by increasing the size of the materials, of the crystals, to 2. And for the second material, we can create a new material that we can set to unlit, which is lighter. And if you assign that unlit material to the second slot, we get these nice looking ice crystals, which I think they are beautiful and they are really nice. You can also use the lit version. The difference is noticeable. It's really up to your taste and if you are allowed to use a little bit more of performance. And after playing around with the properties of the ice shader, I end up with these values. And I think it truly looks awesome in these crystals. And it's an easy way to create ice 
inside Unity with Shader Graph. So that's basically it guys. As usual this is available on my Patreon page. I wanna say a big thank you to my patrons, all of you. Your support has been amazing. And a special shout out goes to the Super Mega Patrons, which are Adam Bradley, Angel R. Dev, Dodolo, Eric C, Goblin Plague, Hero Syndrome The Game, Himera SPC, John Nix, Josh McCormick, Remediola, Ken Lee, Lu Chang Chen, PS, Regan Nade, Silvio Fume, Steven Melton, TK, Xor, and Zyger. You guys are awesome, you guys rock. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, I hope you have enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one.